uh, the other is, thank you for reminding us, and the other is uh, with reference to this particular energy body being a bridge, yes, between the other bodies and the physical body, between the other bodies and the brain of our physical body. And this is something we spoke about also in the textbook of Theosophy when he spoke about how the communication passes through and then ultimately reaches our brain. And so the medium, the bridge through which this whole thing manifests between our respective body. So whether it's from the mental body moving into the astral body and then coming in through the energy body and into our brain, we need the energy body. If there's no energy body, this transmission, this communication will get broken down. The same way from the physical body, when you want information to be communicated outward, it also passes through this particular body. So that is something for us to remember. And so it says here, uh, with reference to the function, that it acts as an intermediary or a bridge between the dense or our physical body and the astral body, transmitting the consciousness of the physical sense contacts through the energy brain to the astral and also transmitting back in the opposite direction from the astral and higher levels, including the mental, down to the physical brain and also our nervous system. Yes? And so... Okay, so... Um, so I won't talk about what uh, Sumi spoke about because the whole concept of the brain, it reminds me of like small little Kriya Shaktis happening from the mental body going down to the, to the physical because you, your mental body actually is the one you learn in later chapter that actually produces a thought. The physical body is not actually capable of feeling. They're just receptors. So we look at that. But just to look at the two main functions, number one, you have the absorption and distribution of prana in the physical body. So that's one, uh, one uh, function. Uh, and that Master Chua has said uh, on page five of Miracles of Pranic Healing, so it's through the energy body that prana or life energy is absorbed and distributed throughout the whole physical body. All right. And uh, he also says um, it also acts as a bridge. Okay. Oh, I put the animation for that. I don't know why it got didn't get reset. Okay. So it also acts as a bridge for the emotional and mental energy. I, I've changed the, the English because it's a little bit, you know, um, complicated. So I said it acts like a bridge for the emotional mental energy from the emotional mental bodies to communicate with the physical body and the nervous system as well, if you read clearly, as well as uh, from levels of consciousness higher than that, um, uh, higher than the mental. Okay. And so that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, if you look at the Achieving Oneness book, I put the quote up there. You have, that's why in the Achieving One's book, uh, Master, Chok, Master Chok talks about the crown chakra. And he says another word, see, another word for uh, gateway or intermediary uh, um, is bridge, can be bridge, right? So if he's written, um, what is he written here? The bridge or uh, intermediary, another word for bridge is gateway, right? So the crown, which is made of etheric matter, can bridge the soul, all right, to a very, very high levels of consciousness or it can bridge even the higher soul and the incarnated soul, all right? So you're using your etheric body and manipulation of etheric matter and doing it in certain sequence and using them as gateways or intermediary or bridges to high, high, high levels of consciousness, all right? So um, in the meditation of Lord's Prayer, for example, the etheric chakras are used to create a bridge from the incarnated soul to the higher soul, all right? So... Creating of bridges, intermediary is another way to look at uh, one of the functions of the ethnic body. That's why it's such an important vehicle for evolution as well. All right. So. Okay. And uh, so when you look at the higher levels in the mental itself, remember there's a lower mental, there's a causal, and then above that is intuitional, and then it goes to the spiritual, the monadic, and going higher. So one of the things that we have to remember from the earlier uh, study sessions is that the crown chakra, the intuition, that we receive at the crown chakra is con connected to the intuitional world, which is higher than the causal, yeah, from the causal level. Above that is the intuitional world. So from that, there is also a link already at your crown. And uh, one of the names also given to the, uh, to the crown is the Brahma Rantra, which means the gateway to heaven. Yep, so. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. That's right. Okay, so then we move on ahead as we speak about the etheric body. 
that it also has centers. Now, um, here, interestingly, it's not mentioned as chakrams. That's usually the name that they give, but they anyway mention that there are centers and it is through this that they try to start to recognize and understand uh, the um, etheric body or the etheric communication that comes through. However, I'd like to go to the next one. It says here that it is important to recognize that the etheric double mere, uh, being merely a part of the physical body is not normally capable of acting separately as a vehicle of consciousness. Yes. And so uh, one thing to remember that this etheric body for a normal person, it is very difficult to separate our etheric body from our physical body or the invisible physical body from the physical body. It's really not that easy to do it. However, they do mention that there are certain people, especially those who, uh, who work with uh, mediums and other, other forms, which we will talk about in later chapters, they are somehow able to separate this energy body and then it is used for various other phenomena. Coming back to us, normally it doesn't happen, but it does mention here, it could be separated. That is the energy body could be separated from the physical body during an accident, during death, or also during anesthesia. So when we go in for a surgery, this does happen uh, to us, yes? And uh, one of the ways uh, to, to understand this is uh, when you look at the the energy body and the physical body, they are so intertwined that when you pull out one from the other, it affects the other. And so it mentions here as we go ahead, and I think Amit will come to that again, is that when, when and if it is pulled out, uh, whether it is with a person who's uh, able to do it uh, intentionally or whether it's pulled out because of an accident or, or something close to death, then the physical body starts losing because there's no prana, which is also very important for its uh, functionality. The energy body becomes brighter and then the luminous energy within the physical body starts to diminish. And they say that this process that happens, if you do disturb it at any point, it might happen that the energy body might just get sucked back in really, really quickly. And then the, the palpitations of the heart might even go close to death. And so we have to be very, very careful. However, they've also mentioned that uh, when this process happens, the physical body starts to look very, uh, you know, uh, what were the words that they use? Uh, a trained expert will still notice that the body is almost lethargic. They mentioned that the brain uh, becomes dazed, yes, and the eyes are lifeless, and also the temperature of the body, if I'm not mistaken, goes down. So this is what tends to happen if there is a separation. And I think for me personally, this happens when, especially when you meet people in the ICU. Right? And when you meet them, you realize they're not whole or they're not together. Uh, so there could be something that's happening with probably the surgery that they went through. And so when the body does go through, say, anesthesia, what actually happens is the etheric body is slowly extracted from the physical form. But what it does is it cannot go anywhere further. And so it wraps itself around the astral body. And when it wraps itself around the astral body, the consciousness of the astral body starts to become very dull. And because of that, when you finish surgery and when the energy body is back in your physical form and you are awake in the waking state, you will notice that that time period where you were away, uh, you have no recollection. The, the brain is unable to uh, remember what happened during that time that you were away. Yes, when there was anesthesia. And that is because the consciousness and even that transmission that usually happens without this body, it cannot transmit into the brain, uh, hasn't taken place. Yep. Go ahead. I think I jumped to four and five. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to talk for a while. Yes. Uh, because uh, I have a uh, uh, little more, a different way of looking at these things. Um, so we come back to uh, the intermediary or bridge. And straight. So, um, so we're coming back to the intermediary of bridge. So uh, it says, in addition, the etheric double develops within itself certain chakras by means, certain centers, sorry, I'm so used to saying chakras, so it comes another way, by means of which the man is able to cognize the etheric world and its hosts of etheric phenomena. So what does that mean? That means that uh, the, the etheric double is uh, able to develop within itself the ability to interact with the 
etheric world or the uh, the etheric world is the inner world which is the etheric body of the earth and all the objects within that etheric body of the earth and these powers or faculties will also be described in due course now do you think that's possible or not possible of course this no one's going to answer uh, it's very possible okay so basically what are you doing in basic pranic healing you are developing your hand chakras right your hand chakra before cannot feel energy or minimally right uh, then you learn a technique called scanning and the more you practice scanning the more you the more better you become so what you're doing is you're developing these uh, centers and to be able to cognize the etheric world and also its host of etheric phenomena and then you so you'll be able to feel etheric energy of not only people but also various objects uh, you know uh, various places uh, people feel the etheric energy even in um, traffic traffic conditions so in the inner world right now at that time they were not allowed to reveal about the forehead yet so you also in high clairvoyance in clairvoyance you develop the forehead and the ajna and some other chakras so you'll be able to see etheric energies so these are examples where yogis are able to develop these etheric uh, centers or chakras all right now it says um all right now okay so master Choa says uh, two quotations um and I put that up to, you see, whenever I talk, I like the teacher to <laughs> validate what I'm saying. So he talks about it. Uh, those of you who are not, uh, who have been healing for experimenting on healing, uh, have developed the skill to sense what part. So you have to develop the skill. In essence, what you're doing is you are developing within itself certain centers. In other words, you are developing the skill um, to sense what part of the patient is effective with the use of distance scanning or even without scanning. Uh, some may even have developed the psychic sense to feel or vaguely, uh, you know, see vaguely the degree of healthiness of an organ. And this all goes into, um, so basically, as you, as your body, your hand first, then your body, and then as your body interacts more and more with the etheric world and your chakras become more and more sensitive, you start to feel through your whole body. According to Masajo, that's how the blind see. They they're not when they feel it. Uh, when the when Masajo was discussing it, this is connected to telepathy. Um, you know, he would they would actually feel through their etheric fingers, and the and when the clairvoyant was looking, it goes to their ajna and forehead or something like that. I have to think about it, and then it gets registered in their brain. Uh, for other people, the uh, you know they feel through the etheric body, and your throat is connected to hearing, but you're not hearing with your physical ear. You're hearing with your etheric ear or your etheric body so the message goes through the throat from the throat it goes to the brain and the ear and other parts and enables you to sense and feel so that's actually what happened when you're sensing things okay so that's how it, uh, the etheric body is picking up um, now the other part that it says the etheric body is being merely a part of the physical body it is normally uh, it is not normally capable of acting as a separate vehicle of consciousness in which a man can live and function it has only diffuse consciousness belonging to its parts and has no mentality, nor does it readily serve as a medium, the key word is medium, of mentality, when disjointed from the dense counterpart. As it is a vehicle not of mental consciousness, but of prana vitality, its dislocation from the dense particles to which it conveys the life currents is disturbing and unhealthy. So basically, one of the ways to look at it is... Um, of course, this is true for normal people, but not people who are uh, highly developed. Uh, and of course, it does have certain consciousness, which we will talk about. I hope it comes in the book, where, what Master calls the lower self or the, uh, you know, that's why chakras are called devas, right? In certain books, uh, because they have consciousnesses. All right. Um, so what it's trying to say, I think, is um, that no one can take or possess an etheric body or can or nor can the etheric body possess people. If you have a shell of an etheric body, it cannot possess a person. Um, it doesn't have consciousness to do that. It just has the consciousness or programming on what to do with the prana and how to absorb it and how to distribute it. All right. When, and we'll go into detail about that later. When the etheric body is not able to deliver prana to certain parts of the body, that part, of course, becomes sick. Right. Uh, that's because it's not there. Now, if you look at the next part, um, it says in persons known as physical or materializing mediums, the double is comparatively easily detachable. Do you agree? Can you detach? Um, what do they mean by detaching in this sense? If you read the whole part, 
its detaching its etheric matter forms the basis of many phenomena of materialization, which can be dealt with later. Okay, so um, so when you're talking about detaching, uh, what happens when you do distant healing? When they're talking about trained detachment, right? You're looking at uh, a person as physical or a person known as physical or material mediums is comparatively easily detachable. That's if you're uh, with proper skill. So what happens when you do distant healing? A small portion of your etheric body actually detaches and using the earth's etheric body as a medium attaches itself to the patient's energy body. Okay, this is also known as a cord or energy link. You have to understand that over 100 years ago, only very few special people knew this. According to Chinese Qigong, according to what Master told us, even in ancient China, to project qi or prana to a patient over a distance of a few kilometers, according to them, requires a person of supernatural skill. But does it? No. Just requires a good teacher, according to Master. So at that time, um, it was very difficult because, to do because people's mental body and emotional body were not as developed as today. What you think is so easy, like you just intend, it was not easy to explain or for people to practice in those days. You have to understand, uh, if you look at 100, 150 years ago, how many people knew how to read and write? How many people knew mathematics, which is common knowledge today? So what was special before is not special today. But still, even distant pranic healing requires some skill and the ability to keep your intention continuous. That's why Master said in the uh, Miracles of Pranic Healing book, pranic distant healing is similar to cross range pranic healing. Um, the only difference is that uh, pranic distant healing, the psychic faculty of the healer has to be developed or sharpened further through regular practice for greater accuracy. So training is required to be able to detach regularly, attach to the patient and have ceaseless flow of prana to and from. So it's also advisable, it says it's advisable to at least gain proficiency in intermediate pranic healing before advancing to pranic distant healing. Um, so that is to show that it's, it is easy, all right? It's still, even today's world, it's not super easy. You have to still have practice to be able to do it, all right? So that I think was covered what, uh, and oh wow, you finished even the anesthesia part, right? So now, um, regarding the anesthesia and detaching of the etheric body, uh, according to what I heard from a, a colleague um, and what he's also read, because it contains, because anesthesia, and this I heard a long, long time ago, because it contains a lot of blue prana, which when there is general anesthesia and it's given to the whole body, because of the blue, sometimes the energy body cannot pump energy to the rest of the aura. As you know, blue is localizing. So the body gets diminished. There's no light. Uh, or energy going in or out of the body, including divine energy sometimes. So the aura diminishes and the energy body looks detached. Okay, so a colleague of mine also read uh, in another book, uh, he was talking to me about it, um, and that when somebody drowns, the etheric body actually gets disconnected. Why? Because one part of you wants to survive, and the so the one part of you is trying its best to go up, you know, towards the surface. It's trying to survive. And the other part, but your physical body is going down due to gravity. All right. So you're drowning, you're going down due to gravity, but your intention, your focus, all your might is trying to go to the surface. All right. So the energy body almost disconnects as it comes back, you know, um, almost disconnects from the physical body in that stage. Now, if you pull someone out and give them CPR and their aura starts to merge again with the nervous system, then the person will feel all these pins and needles all over their body. All right. So I think sometimes after general anesthesia, also people feel these pins and needles around the body. I'm not sure about it. We'll have to ask anesthesiologists. <laughs> so uh, energetically, I think it was Max Heindel uh, who said that the energy body and the physical body seem to separate when people drown. Or if you have no sensation, for example, it's written um, anyway somewhere. It's, if you have no sensation, for example, uh, when your hand falls asleep, or you sleep a certain way and cut circulation from it, the enteric body can almost be found dangling below your hand. Uh, and as the circulation starts to go back in and the energy starts to come back into the hand, you feel like pins and uh, needles. I think this is known as paresthesia. Okay, so local anesthesia, of course, is completely different. It just gives a lot of blue into the part due to which the circulation of energy is affected and the aura seems to get depleted. All right, so it seems to get depleted. All right, so that is um, anesthesia as far as I know, and detaching of the etheric body, because this concept of detaching was a little bit new to me. Um, so this one says, uh, separation of the double 
from the dense body is generally accompanied by a considerable decrease of vitality. Okay, and the dense body diminishes, all right? Um, now it's written here at the bottom of page five, um, when the double is projected, when the double is projected, you have to be understand the word projected is like projection, so it's sent out. When your etheric double is projected by a trained expert, all right? So it's not happening uh, without intention. The etheric double is actually being projected by an expert trained in that, all right? Even the body seems torpid and the mind in a brown study or dazed state, the eyes are lifeless in expression, the heart and lungs uh, action feeble and often the temperature much lowered, okay? It is dangerous to make any, okay, we'll talk about this part first, the whole, Sounds very scary. Um, now, this type of separation, like I said, is not easy for the ordinary person. It requires training and practice. Do you have any idea what they're talking about? By the way, what we're talking about is, you know, diff there are different levels of truth to this. So whatever we speak about could be one, one level of truth only. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? This projecting of the double uh, and your eyes becoming torpid and your heart rate reducing, all that stuff. He's talking about letting go, okay? You see, when you meditate, if you remember when you started meditating, and at least when I started meditating, Master Chua was, okay, let go. I said, go where? <laughs> and then Master Chua was like, come back to your body now. I said, I'm right here. <laughs> so for a long time, I, I know a lot of people who really want to let go. <laughs> okay, they want to let go. But, and some people, when you talk to them, um, you see, they experience expansion of consciousness and that expansion in a way could be detachment, okay? As you let go, the etheric body as well as the other bodies start to detach. You have to, uh, uh, sometimes the word detachment should not be taken literally. Sometimes it could be just taken as detaching from the body, not, 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 uh, not exactly like the whole body is gone somewhere, all right? But it could be that or it could be also expansion or it could be also detaching as in letting go. All right. As you let go the etheric body and as well the other bodies start to detach, there's a feeling of weightlessness. All right. And the auras become really bright. So if you look at the aura of a person practicing meditation on twin hearts, it's really bad. Uh, it's really bright. Um, so, but after meditation, according to Master Chua, when he was talking to us about Tibetan, he says, if you look at a person's aura after meditation, the aura is extremely bright. But if you look at the physical body, it's much more dull. So that when you see a person meditating, if you can get through the light, you notice that the etheric body and the other auras are so much bright, are so bright, but the, et the physical body is not as bright. All right. And if you, uh, so that is one of the reasons after meditation, we recommend exercise. So based on the principle of correspondence, the etheric body, which is now after meditation, you, you come back, you're fused, everything is okay. Uh, um, now merged with the physical body will completely um, will release excess energy into the body, all right, and all the energy is out. Okay. Otherwise, that's why the, that's one of the principles of uh, what Arhatic yogis practice called Tibetan exercise or the five Tibetan rites. Uh, when Master was explaining the second rite, he was talking to us about how the physical body looks a bit dull compared to the energy body. The energy body is so much more brighter than the physical body. So when you do the second exercise, all that energy that's actually in your etheric body and your physical body is dull starts to concretize or go into your physical body and physical cells. It starts to pack in. So it has a seeping effect. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it has a seeping effect into the um, energy, into the physical body. Okay. That's why sometimes you even move your basic chakra, you move your fingers, move your toes. The reason you move your fingers and your toes is to activate the basic chakra, which is in uh, the, uh, in Kabbalistic tradition, the matter element or the opposite of the consciousness element to bring you back to your body. So you have to move your, and, and according to Master Chua, if you want to, if you don't like your dream and you want to get out of it, in your dream, move your fingers and your toes, he says you'll come back to your body. I've never really tried it because I don't know, uh, but I remember him saying that. <laughs> anyway, maybe I like my dream. Um, now, well, this is very important. Um, it says when the double, what I spoke about, when the double, is uh, projected by a trained expert, even the body seems torpid, and the mind in a brown study. So he's talking about this before, 
So when you let go, I'll just say, instead of saying projected, I'll say, when you let go, the etheric body uh, or, and the other subtle bodies, even the body, the physical body seems torpid. The mind is in a brown study or day state. Let's forget brown study. We look at day state. The eyes are lifeless in expression and the heart and lungs feeble and often temperature is much lowered. Have you seen a person letting go? They're like that. So they look a little bit dazed, don't they? So, so just as Master's book, if you look at the Achieving Oneness book, it mentions experiment done in India shows that when a person does this technique, he's talking about, by the way, this not only could be meditation, it could also be breathing technique. So here he's talking about the balancing breathing technique. When a person does this technique, that he goes into an alpha state uh, in a matter of minutes. As a result, the pulse rate is lowered. The breathing is much deeper. This is very good for stress reduction. At the same time, the energy level increases. So it's almost the same. If you look at it, it's the day state or alpha state. The eyes are lifeless because you've seen people meditating or doing this, there's, there's relaxation. The heart and lung action are feeble. That means the heart rate goes down and the lung action becomes deep and rhythmic. And often the temperature is much, much lower. All right. And the temperature can lower because if you're activating the upper chakra so much, uh, you see people who are meditating. That's why many people feel sleepy in a class or many people used to feel sleepy in master's class. If you scan them, they, they look like a, you know, inverted pyramid. The upper chakras are so big, the low, the basic chakra is so small, which con controls the temperature of the body. So that's why many people would also feel very cold in master's class. Of course, he would keep it cold, but even then. All right. Um, that's that. And that's why I think divine energy is actually sensed as cool energy, right? No, let me say something. When it's used by the body, it's warm. So when it's maybe when it's in the ethnic body, it's cool. But when it seeps into the body and utilized, it's warm. Okay. So this is the next one. No, there's nothing here. What the whole? Uh, you, I did only till where you did. That's okay. Go ahead. So the re repercussion, right? Yeah. So you can talk more. Okay, so repercussion. Now, um, okay, now blah, blah, blah. Okay, I shouldn't say that word, I heard. So intimate, in fact, uh, intimate means, you know, closely related. In fact, that there's a connection between the etheric and dense bodies that an injury inflicted on the etheric double will appear as a lesion on the dense body, this being an instance of the curious phenomenon known as repercussion. It is well known that repercussion, okay, so that's it. So this is based on what Master Chua called the principle of correspondence. So he says both the energy body and the visible physical body are closely related that what affects the other uh, and vice versa. All right, so that's page 15. And, um, it says, to continue, it says, should a person accidentally cut his skin? So in other words, if an injury is afflicted on the etheric double, uh, will appear as a lesion. So if a person to cut his skin, there's a co co corresponding pranic leak in the area where the bleeding uh, initially, the affected area where it is cut or sprained will become temporarily brighter to the pranic and it will become grayish because of pranic depletion. So Master Chua is saying the exact same thing. So repercussion is nothing but the principle of correspondence. Okay, to continue, he says, it is well known that the repercussion can also occur in a case of the astral body and injury, injury, injury to the latter under certain circumstances will reproduce itself in the physical body. What he's saying is the mind will influence the etheric body and the physical body. Okay, so Master Chua also mentions this, that emotions can um, affect the etheric body. He says, um, Clairvoyants have observed that the visible physical body is patterned or molded after the energy body. The mind can intentionally or unintentionally. The mind is basically, we learn later, a mixture of your emotional and mental body. All right. Um, the mind can intentionally or unintentionally influence the pattern of the energy body, which will obviously affect the pattern of the physical body. So here they're saying uh, the astral body can affect. Yes, it can. So obviously, you know that uh, when you are nervous, you have an emotional response, you have a physical response and an energetic response as well. Okay. And that's why when women are pregnant, they're encouraged to look at beautiful things, read beautiful materials, not look at violent images, 
nothing that will cause a, a, a you know a, a you know harm uh, onto you know the etheric body because when they see it it'll have an etheric effect astral effect which will have an etheric, etheric effect and this will influence the etheric body their etheric body and the etheric body of the child okay because the raw materials to make the child is probably used by the etheric material of the mother is used to make that okay <sighs> So the next one, it says, uh, it seems probable, however, the repercussion can occur in the case of perfect materialization. So if you just read through this whole part, and he says about the tangible, not visible, I'll explain that. And it says, it must be borne in mind that the above applies only where matter of the etheric double is used for the materialized form. So you have to look at it carefully, where matter of the etheric double is used for the materialized form. You have to use matter of the etheric double that means you have to like take a donation from the etheric double for uh, for them for a materialized form we'll talk about it. when the materialization form of matter from circumambient ether that key, that means other ethers an injury to the form could affect the physical body by repercussion repercussion no more than an injury to a marble statue could engineer uh, injure a man itself i i won't go into detail about this um because some of these techniques can be misused. It basically mentions that if you want to affect someone positively or negatively, you need etheric matter from that person. You need a matter of the etheric double. You need the matter of the etheric double, which also means you need etheric matter from that person. So if you uh, create, so as you know, you can create shapes and images and pictures using air prana and ground prana. So if you create an image or you can create shapes. So if you create an image of a person using air prana, ground prana or pranic breathing, and then you injure that image, uh, it will not have a corresponding effect or repercussion effect on the, uh, physical on the person's physical body or energy body. Compared to say you're getting the actual hair, nails, clothing, which is like a seed of etheric matter of the person and then creating a doll and image based on that and then planting that etheric matter in the person. I can, we will not go into detail about this. It's just, it's just like saying that you have a photo of a person, you injure the photo, you poke holes, you draw a mustache on the person's lips or whatever, it will not affect them. Okay, something like that. You need to get matter, uh, you need to get seed matter from their etheric body to create a repercussion effect. Okay. Um, now, ethic matter can be affected by cold, heat, and by powerful acids. This is what you, you can talk about this. And I'll just add a little bit before. Yeah. Um, so, one of the things that I'd like to mention, uh, since Amit was talking about this, uh, when Master Cho used to even cut his nails, he would never allow uh, his nails to be put into a dustbin because that's how I grew up uh, cutting nails but he would want it flushed, right? And uh, at that point, like I mentioned, I wasn't someone who was doing, for example, uh, teaching psychic self-defense. So I think we asked Master Cho and he says, no, there is a link between the nail, right? And then he says, when you flush it, then it goes into the, the system, right? It does, and no one can actually pick it up and figure out that it's actually Master Cho's and use it. And he says, it's the same for, for everyone. It's not just for him. And uh, that's what you will learn also in psychic self-defense. So the reason why when you wear clothes that belong to someone else, um, it could be a friend, it could be a relative. When you wear it, it doesn't feel, even though it's, it's a freshly washed and ironed and given to you, you don't feel like it's yours because the clothes actually contain etheric matter from that earlier person, whoever it was. Uh, the same thing happens when you go and sleep in someone else's room. When you go into a hotel room and you sleep on a bed, which has been used by so many people, they all leave behind etheric matter and of course other matter as well. Uh, but when you lie down, uh, when you wear those clothes or you enter into that space, you realize their energy, if you are sensitive enough, you pick up, right? And uh, that is one more explanation of uh, this particular aspect. Now, uh, one last thing that I'd like to add here is, um, Many years ago, uh, in the 90s, we had uh, a gentleman who was doing the research uh, with us, and he used to use the Krillian photography. And so this doctor, he actually took people with different issues, and he would actually take the whole palm and look at the impression of that palm when a person was going through different... Sorry about that. Going through different things. It wasn't me, it was a car. <laughs> and so when you took the hand 
uh, of a person who had, for example, I think it was hypertension, there would be a particular form of a, a reddish or orangish uh, circle. And that was there in all patients who had hypertension. When a person had, for example, a problem with depression, the hand, even though it, it was very uh, a very, very small portion that was luminous around the actual shape of the palm, in the case of someone who was depressed, it was literally the size of the, you know, the size of the actual physical body, literally at the skin level. And it was a uh, very dull blue. And um, I thought it was very interesting that this was the phenomena that they started to notice in the energy body, which, which they were able to use uh, through this high uh, frequency electric um, photography that they used. And another one that I found was interesting was with cancer patients. So with cancer patients, uh, when they would take the imprint of the palm through Korean photography, it would have red and yellow. Now, depending on the amount of yellow that was prevalent, you would know which stage of cancer or at least how bad uh, the cancer was in that body. Interestingly, they did, I think this was in Pondicherry, they got some random people to come in also, right, who did not have any cancer to come and show their hands as well. And then the, the hand was photographed along with people who already had cancer. And interestingly, a couple of them already had shown traces that there would possibly be cancer. And so he kept in touch with them to see if there would actually be some kind of change in their life because Master Cho has mentioned it will first manifest on the energy body before it shows itself in the physical body. Whether it's lesions or whatever they call a hundred years ago, we know that it's going to affect the physical body. And um, because we kept in touch with them and uh, they, I think we're at a very early stage, it was detected and they're all fine, at least at that point in the 90s uh, when this experiment was done. So I just wanted to share that with you. Go ahead. The, the rest of the thing. Oh. I only did the very little. Uh, so where are we? Yeah. Uh, no, we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So it must also be borne in mind that the etheric matter uh, through, though, sorry, invisible to ordinary sight is still pure, purely physical and can be affected, uh, like Amit mentioned, with reference to cold, with reference to heat, and also acid. Now, uh, moving on to the next part, uh, where you find that this person who had a limb which has been cut off, and this has happened to a lot of people, especially uh, in the military, when they go into war and they come back and they've lost an arm or a leg, and then they tell you that it's actually itching, uh, or, it, you know, can you please do something because it's really, really itching. So, if you look at it clairvoyantly, they say you can actually still see the etheric limb. And that's one of the reasons why uh, when you manipulate the energy there, which means if you're doing healing and you actually remove the congestion or whatever it is that you feel there, the person starts feeling better. Going back again to uh, the Krillian photography, I remember one of the things, keeping this in mind, this aspect in mind, what they did was we took a leaf, a normal leaf, we took the photograph of the leaf, and then one part of the leaf was chopped off, right? A very tiny part. And then you take the photograph, the whole leaf is still there. Yes, just that low, that part that was cut, it just shows like, you know, the, the same shape as the, um, as the cut, but the rest of it was still there. And that's when we realized, even though the part was cut and thrown away, the energy part you can't cut with a pair of scissors. You can't cut a limb with a pair, the energy limb with a pair of uh, knife or whatever it is that was used yes uh, so keeping that in mind if if then you read this portion when the limb is amputated and they say listen the etheric portion is still there and then it does affect them they still feel sensation there and uh, it can be aroused when the etheric limb um, has been has been worked with they actually can feel if the, uh, if the irritation, or in this case, I think they mentioned, um, what they mentioned here? Stimulus, and the serum sensation is Okay, so, so say for example, it's irritation in the knee, or it's itching. When you do healing, it completely goes away. Yeah, so that's just something that I wanted to add with reference to uh, Krillian photography, and uh, the teachings. You want to add something to the end? Yeah, with regards to the cold oh, water, um, that's one of the reasons uh, for those of you who are Hatik yogis uh, or advanced um, you know, practitioners of uh, meditation, 
uh, we're not technically supposed to have cold drinks. I think that's part of Ayurveda culture as well, because the after meditation, the energy body is actually very bright. This is my understanding of it. Uh, luminous and the meridians are plump because we had asked Master Choa because he would drink cold water a lot. Uh, so I said, you know, but uh, I didn't want to say you're doing it, so I'll do it. Uh, he's like, oh, Master, if I have cold water, what will happen? You know, it's just water. He's like, ah, nothing. But after a few years, uh, you won't be able to talk. You lose your voice. <laughs> you lose your voice. So, so I said, okay, so one of the reasons that I understood is the energy body is very bright, luminous, and the meridians are plump, you know? There's a lot of uh, energy circulating in it very quickly. It's like, you know, highway, super highway. Uh, and having cold water, due to the principle of correspondence, since it's physical also, due to the principle of correspondence, it affects the energy of the throat. Uh, even the physical throat gets cold and energetically the throat correspondingly it affects the throat chakra which has a constricting effect on the meridians and from it um, uh, such as the hands because the throat is connected to even the hands the legs and even the brain and the jaw minors and even the heart so it affects the back heart the heart. so there are a lot <laughs> of secrets of the throat uh, so um, so it, it gets constricted and because of that the meridians get constricted and if you do it over and over again after a long period of time it's like a energy jam in that area so it'll affect your voice and of course uh, the rest says there are a large number of phenomena um, which are connected to the etheric double uh, its extrusion from the dense body and and so forth but these can be dealt with more conveniently and satisfactorily at later stages after we've studied nature and the methods of working of prana and vitality which is uh, uh, chapter two. And with that, congratulations, we have finished one chapter out of 25. Yay. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I hope uh, the first chapter, which is one of the smallest chapters, I know it's taken Some of the chakra ones are small. I was checking actually. I was, uh, <laughs> I was like, how long is it going to take us? If it's two sessions per chapter, it'll take four months to finish one book. But yeah. at least if we do three, it'll come three books in a year. At least we'd study it properly. All right, so uh, with that, we come to the end. We don't want to move into the next chapter. We'll start that on Friday and we'll move ahead. Uh, but also on Friday, maybe after the session, we'd like to find out from you uh, whether it's uh, okay, the pace, is it too much? Do you prefer twice a week or do you prefer, um, you know, three times a week? Then accordingly, we can uh, change. You can see there are questions. So we can then change uh, the sequence of the study because uh, life will start to change in some time. Right now we have, but, but if you feel um, you want uh, a, a greater gap, then do let us know. That we'll ask you on Friday. So that's uh, basically it. We're looking at your questions to see if there are any, and then we will ask. If you, if you want to ask questions, you may raise your hands and then we'll... Uh, you know, you have to keep in mind, some of you are asking more questions about the details of this. The, it's a general description of what is to come in the book. So yeah. all that point of the different states of matter and the, all that stuff, you, it should come up in the book. I don't want to spoil the... Actually, I forgot what the book's about. I'm reading it again after. It's like a new book for me. Yeah, we're all reading it after a while. So, so uh, kindly... Okay, recording. Um, what happens in the coma? Okay, now that I'm not going to go into. Uh, <laughs> even if I... Okay. Um, yeah, so if the body becomes very excited or epileptic attack, sometimes it vibrates and it shifts out. That's what I heard. It's still, astral travel is different. Um, That's using the astral body. Astral body, so that is book number two. Sorry, uh, also one of the things that they do mention is sometimes when the body gets really, really weak, uh, very sick, there can be this separation that happens as well, right? Uh, so... Maybe if you notice when you get very, very sick and you're in bed for a while and you get delirious, uh, sometimes you feel like you're out there and, and in here and things change. So it's, it's also partially the, the movement of the energy body out of the physical body. Ah, here he's saying paresthesia, pins and needles sensation. Oh, it's very common. Oh, that's good. Uh, not good, but you know, it explains a certain amount of, you see, because the etheric body has to merge again with the nervous system. So when that process is like reconnecting to the ner nervous system, um, uh, all over your body, uh, you start having pins and nails because the nerves start reacting. It's like rebooting. <laughs> okay. So, um, hallucinating projecting, uh, no hallucinating is not uh, actually, they're not hallucinating. They're actually seeing things in the inner world, but we won't go into that. Yeah. Phantom sensation. Um, that is called the phantom okay. sensation. And 
is detachment okay uh <laughs> three times as good <laughs> does social media connection have ethnic matter i i will have to get a, a, a social media connection the ethnic matter i'm sure because a lot of these actors uh who Through come courts, yes. yeah so since they come on television or these well known personalities who come uh, today of course social media people do connect to them and that connection does affect them the way people think about them those are thought forms heading towards them like rockets uh, plus people who connect to them on various chakras does influence uh, the energy because masacho has mentioned sometimes for example even in the solar plexus he says okay let's clean out your solar plexus and he says you have to remember sometimes some of that energy that you have in your solar plexus is not yours it's actually somebody else's but because of the cords they've left that residue inside you so when you when you even cut cords you have to pull out that residue otherwise that continues to remain and in some of us sometimes you feel that we've actually changed a bit um, that change is not really only yours it's also the energy from outside and especially if they if they're not very positive in the solar plexus uh, yes recording is available um, if the etheric double is not accompanying during surgery does healing work at that time it is a company it just gives a feeling that it's detached to the clairvoyant you have to understand that these are based on 100 year old clairvoyant in observation it's just looking like it's floating above it, but it is still sort of connected that being said no the transmission is not so great as far as i understand sorry so, so the the healing during the surgery i'll have to think about that correct so, so based on what they're saying and they say that the the um, etheric body actually goes and you know kind of wraps itself around the astral world so then how does it work when this happens there have been some people i can't remember when uh sometime recently they mentioned that when they were trying to scan the energy body of a person when they were in surgery they couldn't feel the aura i don't know who mentioned this to me at least two people uh, and they were working i'm trying to figure out which instance this this was very recently i'm talking in the last year or so and they would say they cannot feel it but after the patient would come from come out of surgery they could feel it it's like right? meditation so you're still working on the etheric body <laughs> then after meditation it comes back and it you know it uh, what <laughs> yeah it's like you know you let go during meditation then you exercise it comes back so maybe you're working only on the etheric body <laughs> and then when it comes back it it starts merging and then all the work gets you know it has power it has uh, the strength to repair the physical body but um i, I do notice uh, master has given us protocols for pre surgery and post surgery but he's never given us uh, during surgery <laughs> at least on lower levels i don't know <laughs> we have to look into no, that no no that, but that, that is not include uh, even uh, later it does not include uh, healing the body during the surgery yeah right? uh, now the throat part losing the voice after some especially how it's connected to the hands and legs you see the body has a network of major meridians or nadis uh, the throat is in charge of the lymphatic system and uh, the lymphatic the lymph nodes are uh, the in the arms and legs so there's a big meridian from the throat to the arms into the legs and also uh, there so, is within the um, the what you call the trunk yes so around the uh, navel around in the liver so there are other parts also so that's why you notice people with arthritis uh, the protocol or musculoskeletal issues we heal the throat chakra and you must be wondering what is the throat got to do with the muscle but it's actually because there's dirty red energy in the throat area in the in the arm area or leg area if it's one way the energy can seep the other way so the dirty red energy from the meridians in the the arms the legs it goes back to the throat which affects the throat the jaw minor the person gets migraine blah. anyway um and uh, the other thing is also the ring finger is connected to the throat um you'll have to the yes. person who's okay it. okay unmuting you so you can talk now um can you mention the name pushpalata you unmuted you raise your hand no okay yeah. go to tarik tarik uh i will unmute you hi tarik okay how are you good 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 uh i am very thankful for you and uh, the knowledge you are giving us yes uh, i wanted to ask about uh, um if someone that uh, lost his arm or leg uh can it be regenerated by someone who has a crystal aura because uh, i heard that in the past uh the crystal body is arhatic level 5 um the crystal aura um it's not anyway um 
can you regenerate with that is what he's asking a whole limb if they are very skilled and they are very clear chris owner theoretically yes you can theoretically theoretically but why are you asking this question on a recorded session um <laughs> you see when uh, according to when master was talking to us you know when jesus said okay something about my body and i will rebuild it in 3 days uh to rebuild his body in 3 days or if master chua master chua said if he's not mistaken so if he, i'm not mistaken that he's not mistaken <laughs> he used the level 5 technique uh to uh, regenerate to rebuild the body in 3 days that's why i think in the bible it says uh he says when somebody try to touch me like don't touch me yet it's it's not fully um, something ready or something that is still concretizing but the principles behind that I'm not sharing on live stream <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it is possible tarik to just give you uh, an understanding but has someone actually done something to this extent where they've uh, been able to regenerate a whole limb no uh, but they have used that energy to regenerate a smaller parts and also help uh, with the uh, with um, with the healing of the physical organs so for the physical organs it has been used and it's it's proven very very useful yeah uh and also you have to remember that um uh if there's karma involved then nothing can supersede it except the law of mercy as far as i know so uh, no amount of technology would healing technology would help in that in that case we have to pray to the supreme god for mercy and love yeah so hopefully that's helpful tarik all right going to alka hi alka hi atma namaste thank atma you for namaste in super session uh, just one question uh, when you talk about the etheric double in near death experience is that the etheric double so we have people with near death experience right who are actually clinically dead but they can see the body so is that the etheric double i'm not sure if it's in any theosophy book yes i'm not too sure if that's actually uh, that they are in their etheric body and they see or they move actually into their astral body and then they are able to then see uh, what's happening on the table if they are in the mm -hmm. hospital or if they are at home uh, mm -hmm. or on the road side so uh, it's either that they've moved out of the physical body into the astral body and they're seeing they're hovering over or, or they're standing around and and watching what's happening but if it's the etheric i think i'll have to ask someone because personally i do not know anybody who's given me this information based But on dr strange it's the actual <laughs> oh. oh, they do God. research you know before they uh <laughs> no it makes sense for it to be astral it makes sense for it to be astral but it is okay. uh, there's a still a link according to my show when the link yeah. is disconnected uh, there's a link from the solar plexus that's why sometimes when you're moving in the astral world in your dreams you'll see this thread behind you that's actually the link to your etheric body and physical body so i i i sense it's the astral um um that 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 is affected but you see it, the consciousness is still there in the etheric it's also there in the astral it's like look at it as you're working on chrome or safari or whatever is your favorite browser and you open a separate tab so you ah, okay. this is on the new tab but you're still there in the other tab is still open so but more here <laughs> does that answer your yes. question right <laughs> so more. until and unless the entire soul uh, energy is pulled out of the physical body only right. person will not come so but if if that connection is still there even if it's 10% or whatever it is then there is a possibility of the incarnated soul coming back and using the physical body again okay thank you Thank you so much. Hi. See, that's why I tell you. Hi. <laughs> uh, now, Bindu, does having a bath with cold water also affect uh, affect the energy body? Definitely does. Definitely does. Uh, yes. Even hot water for cancer patient is not recommended, by the way. It's in yeah. the book. But if you've done a very very intense uh, spiritual practices, for example, if you're an erratic yogi, are you not allowed to have a shower for even two three hours, right? And definitely no drinking. Uh, cold drinks cold water having a cold shower you see the principle of correspondence works both ways okay so, so joy deep we going to go to you yes yeah uh, hi both of you the sessions are really amazing thank you thank you joy deep <laughs> uh, uh, amit the question and so many you're the bangalore that, boy yeah <laughs> oh, the uh yeah the cold shower how does it affect our energy body and is it recommend to take cold shower 
before the arhati yoga meditations because generally there are so many benefits that are mentioned with the cold shower all right so let me give you some path and then uh, amit can add in the 50s they used to have cold shower <laughs> when they were very excited <laughs> Oh my god I think there are a few people there who might understand what you're saying uh -huh. <laughs> All right sorry ladies and gentlemen uh, but anyway coming back to what you're saying so when I mentioned uh, advanced meditations one of the things with advanced meditation is also the kundalini and the kundalini is a very warm energy that starts to move across your entire uh, system and when you have a cold shower hot and cold is not going to be very good for your body in the long run right so you need to allow the body to first absorb and assimilate all the energy and so having a shower before is very very uh, useful so whether it's a cold or a warm or a hot whatever you want to have no problems you can go uh, do your exercise even breathing exercises even blue triangle after that have a shower and come and do your meditation not a problem so it is cleansing it is purifying so if you want to do that joydeep you can what else you want to add uh kundalini is hot uh <laughs> uh but also it's very activating the reason you want to awaken kundalini is to activate the chakras and to uh, uh, it, you know um increase the body's ability to retain higher energy without exploding um, yeah. uh, so to uh, so that requires a very activating effect which is why it activates everything even the good bad ugly everything so uh, when you activate it has an activating effect then when you have a cold shower which has a constricting effect uh it doesn't move well together yeah and that thing takes time for the body to digest by the way but other than that also they say that there are so many benefits of the cold shower you can have it any time just not <laughs> just after that oh uh, yeah that's an example to explain what's in the book uh, okay and now if you've been living in bangalore um, i know it's very difficult to have a cold shower unless it's like you know our summer is almost coming to an end so taking a cold shower can actually affect the body uh, depending on the kind of place you are in so it really depends on on both your body type uh, the city you come from and uh, also whether you enjoy cold showers so okay. <laughs> um, no, thank you both of you yeah, yeah, so yeah, chani dibrani um no. yeah hold on a long time ago i had a surgery i could see myself uh, from above for a while a little uh, that's the same explanation uh, but more likely more likely uh, you see the soul is not inside the body it's actually the body that's inside the soul so that's why uh, people who are meditating and they're letting go uh, they have the some experiences they go from out of their they look at themselves meditating or they're floating above their body and they're looking at themselves and they are meditating over there and they're like is this for real uh, some actually people got scared and stopped their practice uh, that's what i think master was said and he's like look you need to that's when he was giving the example of the uh, the lion to persevere or to dare anyway oh, what else uh, sima um sima will unmute you i have to uh, yeah okay sima you're gone uh, what did i do we told her to leave oh no i unmuted her no, asked to unmute can you hear me yeah i can hear yeah, you okay go ahead hello hi yes i can, can hear you, hear you. Me? yes yes yeah yeah I mean, yeah yeah uh, thank you very much it, uh, it was so amazing just i was deeply listening just simple question regarding their relation of their ring with the truth is it just the ring finger of the right hand or left hand is it different and how is the pranic effect i mean how it just it will release the pressure over the throat chakra or? i don't think he's mentioned left or right uh, index finger it's like i think it's just mentioned for the green finger. crystal uh, for doctors for anti-contamination is the left ring finger it's more connected to the throat. oh left ring so so how is that how we can use in the positive way just by pressing it so it can release the all right okay so left if you've done crystal healing you know what to do that, that's uh, besides wearing it and that's a completely different yeah. explanation it's the principle on the uh, principle of correspondence based on your physical body so your whole body is reflected in your eye your whole body is reflected in your ear your whole body is reflected in your hand your whole body is reflected in your feet and each one has its own that's uh, right oh okay all right thank you thanks, thanks. welcome Thank you. And, um, and um, Neha. Neha, okay. Hi, Neha. You're unmuted. Hi there. This is a nice session, and uh, really thank you for all your words and patience. Uh, yeah. So I have two questions. Um, one is, uh, is is has uh, sleep paralysis got to do anything with the etheric body? Essentially, you can't wake up. You can't do anything, right? 
No, which one? I didn't. I sleep didn't. paralysis. Sleep paralysis. Oh, okay. I have no experience with sleep paralysis. I might have a mild form of it. No, just serious. I'm just joking. Um, sleep paralysis. Uh, uh, no, there are many factors. I have to look at the medical causes, but uh, you know, energetically, it could be due to excess energy also sometimes. Uh, but uh, physically, I'm not sure. No, I have no I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Let me. So, uh, okay. Dr. Sagar, you can give us some inputs <laughs> later. Sleep. Sure. Uh, so then cord cutting comes into picture? Uh, you know, when you want to wake up someone from, uh, you know, if they're not conscious, you just increase the pranic energy level in their body. So usually it's the basic ming main back head. So help with that. No, essentially... Uh, what happens is you are conscious. So uh, as per my experience, I was conscious. I can see everything. I can feel everything. I cannot move my hand, legs, body, or anything for that matter. All I can just do is like keep my eyes open and sense everything practically. Yeah, it sounds like a basic chakra issue. It sounds like a basic chakra because that's in charge of movement, flesh, bones, uh, those kind of things. Yeah. We'll have, and to, then, and scan. We'll have to scan someone who has it and we'll, we'll figure it out. Let me, let me okay. And uh, so also the second one I had was uh, whenever you get dreams, right? Um, most of the times, uh, more than most of the times, I cannot see myself, but I can see somewhere I'm going, I'm doing something, but I cannot see myself literally, like literally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so why, I mean, uh, so I think there is no cord connection there, right? With my astral body, because I am not picturizing myself in there. I'm just looking at everything like a movie or something. Ah, you see, um, I, I, you know, you have to understand that I'm basing it on your description and it could be wrong because, um, you know, when somebody sees an elephant and they've seen it for the first time, you ask four people to describe it, they might describe it differently. So these type of inner experiences are very difficult to um, pinpoint. But if you're just looking at things like a movie, most likely it's your thoughts and emotions. It's what we call inner noises in the Achieving Oneness book. And that's why you should practice, if you are done Arhatic, the meditation, the inner breath, and the twin hearts, which removes the, uh, more the meditation inner breath, which will remove this inner noises. Because it's like, uh, you have, you see, you have inner noise, which are basically usually emotional and mental energy. And this uh, actually, when you go to sleep, you're actually your emotional body is not very, very clean. There's so many thoughts and emotions, either from yourself or from other people. Um, uh, and that affects the, uh, you know, it's like driving with a windshield that's not very clean. So you see the whole, whole, uh, whole uh, movie kind of thing. So you're not able to move, you're within that shell. So sometimes if the teacher is very connected to you and, you know, there is, uh, you know, it's like, you know, kids who get dirty, okay, stand and go to school, they give a karate chop and just break down that inner noise and, you know, take you out. Uh, otherwise, um, it normally takes a long time to get rid of inner noises, but with the meditation inner breath, which is taught in Arhatic Yoga, uh, maybe in just a few, like uh, one time would remove maybe 30, 40%. I'm not sure about the exact, but it, it, in just a few weeks, the relatively all the inner noise is removed. That's why it's very important to do it regularly. Okay, then what, in, uh, what if uh, I'm not picturizing myself, but I know that I'm there in the dream? Like, you know, the cameraman holding the camera, but cameraman doesn't really come into the video. Correct. But I think even when I move, I, even with the physical body, I don't really look at myself. I, I right. just move. So you're probably in your astral body and you're using yeah. your astral eyes or astral vision to look at the astral world that you are in. And uh, it's not necessary that all of us can actually see this cord that Amit mentioned it's that's sometimes. going to, right. towards our physical body. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that as long as you come back every morning into your physical body. Automatic, don't worry. Yeah, so, uh, but you, uh, you don't have to necessarily actually physically see yourself. Maybe sometimes you do and, you know, you see your hand or other parts uh, moving out. But if you don't see it, it's okay. You're just using your astral eyes to look at what is around you. Right. Makes sense. Thank you so much. No problem. Mm -hmm. We'll go with the last one. Um, there are 85 messages. We'll go yeah. through it and... Uh, Who's that? Uh, Sweater. Shweta. Hi, Atma Namaste. Atma. I have one question. Uh, uh, chakras are the energy centers, which are part of etheric body. So crown center is also a part of etheric body. So when the, once the soul leaves the physical body and is in the astral body, how they will remain connected with the higher soul or this if there is no uh, centers like 
that we have in the fiscal body through or the ethnic court. body. Through the special court, the, the three seats are your anchor points. It holds the, the soul in place. But I won't go into detail because it's not part of the book yet. Not See, this book. Not this book. <laughs> right? But okay. yet, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have similar chakras in other uh, vehicles for you to come back to your physical body. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to... So uh, it's almost eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when the soul wants to leave the body in the ICU, you heal the etheric body. It's not very easy. It's not because of the physical permanency that's in the Achieving Oneness book. Uh, the physical permanency, the life energy that comes from that, which we talk in uh, chapter two, uh, it enables you to uh, absorb prana. But as your body is about to die, as Master Chua described, it becomes dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So your absorption ability, the body's ability to absorb, gets highly affected. So even if you have a very good healer, they they energize. The body doesn't have the ability to absorb the prana anymore. Um, and even in our experience, even when you invoke, the healing angels also don't come. <laughs> it's one of the yes. signs that the body is going to uh, die. And one more thing, sometimes no if you're very, very intuitive, uh, the, the soul, the incarnated soul of your patient might actually even give you a message saying that I'm not willing to come back. Anyway, let's not talk about that because there'll be too many questions. Uh, and yeah. Bye. <laughs> we'll go into more questions. Uh, uh, okay. Let's run through them. Yes, before and after. Oh, okay, blah, 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 okay. Uh, crystal healing, how is the crystal contact? The, okay, we look at that. Uh, um, ah, you could feel that, uh, Amita, you, you could feel that you are stuck in the ceiling of the room. Like our oh gas God. balloon. Yeah, so you detached. <laughs> Good thing you reattached. <laughs> Those may be problem. So, um, Okay, laser treatments happen in the physical body, uh, those rays while healing. Mm, we shall see what this book talks about and based on that, we'll talk about it. Why is it not going to get tattoos? Cold ice cream, no cold ice cream also. <laughs> yeah, why is it not? I, I have experience with that, by the way, so... <laughs> Why is it not recommended to get tattoos? I don't know, Sumi. So uh, I'm, um, I only have a friend of mine who got it um, on her back, I think. It was just behind her neck. Um, <clears throat> and Master had seen it. And uh, he told her, you know, you've actually damaged the, uh, not just the physical body, but the other bodies as well. And he says, please do not do any more tattoos. This was mentioned to her and that's what she told me. And um, I, I would just take her word because I don't think she would want to lie about it. And uh, Master Chua doesn't usually talk to everybody about everything. So something that he sees in a certain person, he might share only with that person. And so she shared that with me and I'm sharing this with you. So please don't go around saying, you know, Master Chua said this. Yeah, whatever. somebody has to tell you like, remove yeah, it now. Yeah, don't go uh, tell him. Let, it's okay. We if have, you to have it, at, it's okay. We have to look at the principle about how the tattoos work because it just keeps uh, needling, right? So we see the effect on the ethnic body. Maybe that's a good experiment. So <laughs> All yours. No, I won't get that. I'll just go. Uh, you know, in Goa, we just... Right. Yeah. Shall okay, people. Uh, shall we end the session? Thank you for being with us. I think you need to go back to your family. We also need we to. We started go back. ten minutes late, so we got our karma back. So. Yeah. <laughs> <Close All right. laughs> Connect onto your palate. Close your eyes. Feel yourself in the presence of God and the Teacher. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected Teacher, Grand Master Chung, Kok Sri to Lord Mahagaraji Mele. To all the great beings and teachers and masters of theosophy, to all the invisible and spiritual helpers, especially the beings of knowledge, light and power, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for this amazing opportunity, for the priceless teachings being given to us today. We ask you to help us to absorb and assimilate this, to use it to become better instruments to do thy work, and also to help heal others and make this world a better place. We thank you in full faith. With gratitude, respect and love, we thank you. Namaste, guys. Thank you namaste. Much. Thank you for being with us. We'll catch you on Friday. If I'm a couple of minutes late, please hang on. She has a session. I'm always on time. <laughs> right. I'm actually seated right here. Uh, but just switching takes a couple of minutes. So apologize. We will try and see how we can work this out. So next yeah. time we don't do this. Yeah. Thank you. Atma namaste. Good night. Enjoy. Be safe. I'll end it for all of you. Thank you very much again. Bye-bye.